One thing that I've learned from being in quarantine is that people, uh, this, this is like being in jail is what it is. It's uh, mostly because I've been wearing the same clothes for 10 days and everyone in here is gay. Hey everyone, welcome back to Film Focus. There are plenty of things that Ellen doesn't cover on her show. This is the dark side of Ellen DeGeneres. Number 10, Ellen defied the 2007-08 Writers Guild of America strike. You would think that an entertainment industry veteran like Ellen would have a little more sympathy for underpaid screenwriters. Back in 2007 and 2008, film and television screenwriters of Writers Guilds of America East and West went on strike for better pay. Ellen showed her support by taking a single day off before crossing picket lines by continuing to tape her show. And what's more, she allegedly fired her head writer of five years when she refused Ellen's orders to defy the strike. Under circumstances like these, it really makes you wonder whether or not the show really must go on. It makes me very happy that every single day that, that I can you know, hear a story that I make a difference. It makes me really happy because it's all I want to do is make people smile and make people feel better. Number 9, Ellen is allegedly mean to her staff. Maybe Ellen should follow her own mantra of being kind to one another. In a now infamous Twitter thread, Kevin T. Porter alleged that the comedian has a steady mean streak. Ellen apparently chooses a different member of the staff every day to be mean to. If that wasn't enough, costume designer Allison Fear claimed on Twitter that she has a watchful eye on her staff's lunches, enforcing strict rules on what they can and can't eat. With staff hoping it isn't their day to be picked on and hiding away to eat their lunches in peace, these reported stories make it seem like Ellen isn't so different from a playground bully. So uh, consider me your professor. This is like Kindness 101, so pay attention. This is on the midterm. Number 8, the show's crew was left in the dark during the pandemic. Fans of the show would expect the warmth and generosity Ellen exhibits on her program to extend to those that make it all happen, her crew. But when the coronavirus pandemic hit and the show could no longer be filmed on set, Ellen's crew was reportedly met with radio silence. For over a month, no information was communicated to them about their pay or working schedule. Meanwhile, Ellen has managed to continue taping the show at home, hiring an external tech company instead of recruiting her original crew. But her crew members weren't alone in their betrayal. Viewers took offense to a tone-deaf joke Ellen made comparing quarantining in her mansion to being in jail. Yikes. One thing that I've learned from being in quarantine is that people, uh, this, this is like being in jail is what it is. It's uh, mostly because I've been wearing the same clothes for 10 days and everyone in here is gay. Number seven, a recipient of Ellen's charity was threatened with jail time. Ellen's selfless habit of gifting her guests generous sums of cash might have some unwanted strings attached. Rashonda Fields was grateful to her friend when she helped her through a tough time and wrote to Ellen in hopes of getting her a shout out. To her surprise, Ellen one-upped her by inviting her on the show and gave her a whopping $55,000. But unfortunately, the surprises didn't end there. When she failed to pay taxes on the gift, the IRS prosecuted her and following a trial, she was threatened with jail time. Though the case was ultimately overturned, this story proves that some things are too good to be true. Have a seat, we're gonna help somebody else. That was fun, right? Oh my God, I know. Number six, the target of one of Ellen's jokes sued her. Although Ellen has long been known for her positive and seemingly victimless sense of humor, a few particularly nasty jokes appear to have fallen through the cracks. One instance occurred on her show when she was presented with one of real estate agent T.T. Pierce's signs. Not only did the comedian mispronounce and make fun of the agent's name, but Pierce's phone number was left uncensored during that episode, leading to a series of tormenting phone calls. Pierce sued the show for the emotional distress that Ellen caused her, though it was ultimately thrown out as the judge saw no wrongdoing in Ellen's joke. My husband saw the sign and thought your viewers would enjoy the name of this realtor. Titty Pierce. <laughs> Number 5, YouTuber Nikki Tutorials had a bad experience on the show. Ellen is known for her welcoming and jovial attitude towards her guests, but it seems like a different story might take place off camera. After appearing on the show, ultra popular makeup YouTuber Nikki Tutorials had a few things to say about how she was treated. The beauty guru revealed that she was prohibited from using a bathroom that was reserved for another guest, and that Ellen neglected to greet her before taping and treated her coldly when the cameras weren't rolling.
rolling. And she's not alone. The Bachelor's Kareen Olympios alleges a similar experience on the show, citing Ellen's aggressive and cold off-screen demeanor. I think it's still so uh, early for a lot of people to uh, to understand, and yeah. and and I think the more that that someone sees someone else on television and says, "Oh, that's what exactly. that is." Number four, the show has been sued by multiple record companies. Fans know that an episode of The Ellen DeGeneres Show is not complete without a little dancing. What fans might not know is that Ellen's taste for the catchiest and most popular tunes got her in a lot of trouble back in 2009. Four of the biggest recording companies sued the show for allegedly using over a thousand songs without permission. Turns out producers never bothered to get licenses for the countless songs Ellen got groovy to with their audience. Somehow, the show managed to smooth things over, the recording companies terminated the suit, and Ellen continues to dance on to her favorite hits. <laughs> yes! Number three, there is a strict dress code for the audience. Have you ever wanted to be in the live audience of a taping of The Ellen DeGeneres Show? If you do get the opportunity, you should think long and hard about your outfit, as the show has the right to deny entrance to anyone not following their strict dress code. But hey, as long as you remember to don your best business casual and in-fashion threads, refrain from black and white and dull colors in general, avoid wearing Ellen merch or anything with a noticeable logo, and not coordinate outfits with your audience, buddy, you'll be totally fine. So here's a fashion don't t-shirt. It says touchdown. <laughs> Who has time to proofread, really? These are called clear knee mom jeans. They put the no in Nordstrom, I think. Number two, Ellen has a sensitive nose. Some people might have a chair outside their office or perhaps some artwork to decorate the door, but Ellen's edition is truly unique. The comedian allegedly has a bowl of gum at all times outside her office. According to a tweet by TV writer Benjamin Simon, she requires everyone to chew a piece of gum before coming in to talk to her because of her sensitive nose. We guess if her staff ignores the offensive aspect of this whole process, they do know where to find a readily available piece of gum free of charge. Oh, well, that's not good. <laughs> Thank you. That's Very not nice. really, really Number one, Ellen almost ended the show in 2016. Though it's hard for us to imagine daytime television without Ellen's upbeat series, she was considering pulling the plug when its contract was ended back in 2016. The much-loved comedian was getting conflicting advice from her inner circle. Her wife, Portia de Rossi, encouraged her to retire while her brother, Vance, urged her to continue with the show. Ultimately, she followed her brother's advice, but canceling the program is not quite off the table. In a 2018 interview with the New York Times, Ellen revealed that she still thinks about leaving the show. Well, let's enjoy it while we can. You can make yourself happy simply by forcing yourself to smile for as long as you can. So I thought, well, sh we should all try it. Let's smile as long as we can, okay? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure to turn on post notifications to get instant updates when videos like this one are out. This is Film Focus, and I'll see you in the next video.